Hey everyone, welcome back to Ruby Live. My name is Annika and I'm here with Isabel Poir. Hey Isabel, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. You said that so perfectly, <laughs> Poir. It's so hard to say. <laughs> I've been trying, trust me. I've been practicing my French for this day. Um, Izzy Thank is you. a brand designer based out of Ottawa, Canada, and she's also the lead designer for um, Ottawa Design Club. Is that right, Izzy? I'm the founder, actually, of the Ottawa oh, Design Oh, the founder. Club. Yes. Hey, mm -hmm. look at that. I'm really excited to have you, Izzy, over here on Adobe Live. Join us today and um, teaching us all about branding and merchandising for an immersive museum brand. But before we actually dive into it, I just want to mention that if you missed the previous stream right before us, you can view the replay both on Behance and YouTube. Check out photographer Koki Yamaguchi as he edits landscapes and cityscapes. Actually, there were some portraits as well, and they worked in Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. So make sure to watch the replays. And um, if you're watching this on YouTube or Behance, hi and a warm welcome to all of you all joining us today. Let me know where you're joining us from, um, wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to you all. But now, without further ado, Izzy, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your website, um, show us your work and why don't you get started <laughs> with what is up for day one? Oh my God, okay, we have a packed day today and I can't wait to <laughs> dive in everything. So, hi, my name is Isabel, but everyone calls me Izzy. And um, I am from Ottawa, Canada, as you said in my beautiful intro. So a few fun facts about Ottawa, because people don't really know like where that <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the capital. So capital it's city. the capital of, of Canada, exactly. And we have really cool museums. We have amazing restaurants. We have amazing hiking trails i'll stop saying amazing uh we have a festival all year long and we are an unknown creative city hmm. Very so <laughs> back in 2020 i founded not one but two creative endeavors which you also mentioned so the first one being ip design which is my day job and feel free to connect on my behance my instagram uh, I have a personal and a business Instagram, so feel free to connect there. And uh, I work with brands that want to render experiences. Uh, if it's immersive, if it's multisensorial, if it's about giving this wonderful warmth of feeling, I want to work with you. Love that. Today is also a amazing, exciting day for me because I'm relaunching my website i have been working on this forever we can talk about Ooh. it later if you want <laughs> relaunching a website let's take it oh, that. yes um i mean there's still a, a few kinks to iron out like every launch that the website that you launch but um anywho i'm pretty happy with it and i'll just keep like adding to it uh some credentials i recently just got my certified brand architect certification so this is like above a strategist and we will be doing a bit of brand strategy today so this is very 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 new <laughs> it was the hardest thing that i've done in my life to be honest isn't isn't it isn't this certification aren't you one of the two canadian women out of 60 total people in the world to have that certification yes correct okay okay uh i was part of the <laughs> just making uh, sure I'll, I'll go back i was part of the first court um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, there's only two Canadians who participated in this certification and yeah, I'm the only women. So yeah, kind of have a big title to, you know, or big shoes to fill at the moment. <laughs> and if you know, who's giving the certification, it's Marty Neumeyer. He is an amazing brand yeah. strategist designer. And, um, yeah, I just author. love his books, yeah. author. Books. Yeah. A lot of books. Yeah. So the second shift is the Ottawa Design Club. Uh, you can connect with us as well there. This is a purely volunteer run uh, community club where we offer speaker events and workshops. And we also mm -hmm. have a biannual zine. So these are our three first publications. All of them have a multi-sensorial experience. So they are immersive which yeah. again, we will dive into what is an immersive brand later today. Okay. Our most recent zine uh, we launched in May, Origins. It's uh, three chapters, tradition, identity, and culture um, with like people's submission and artwork in there. It's a very heartfelt zine. We have 
decompose the meaning of that. We are also offering music, as you can see with that QR code per chapter. And we are also offering tea um, <laughs> with the zine. So you get the taste, smell, touch. Uh, you can uh, oh the artwork, obviously. And you just get like that full experience. It's really, really cool. Oh, I love that. That is actually, uh, isn't that similar to what we're diving into today? Because it's like an immersive experience with like all the senses being activated. Correct. I wanted to make sure everything tied in. <laughs> Very good. Um, so that's all cool. There's a lot of credentials, but like, let's be honest, you want to know my best party trick, um, which I'll let you kind of watch at the moment what it is. Oh, there's a part. <laughs> what? Exactly. It's it's going to go on loop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that... Are you an ambivert? Yes, I am wow. an ambidextrous, as you can, I, I guess, as you can say. And I can write uh, like, as a mirror effect. And just to mess <laughs> you up even more, I am mostly a lefty. So even writing that Isabel in the r mirror was yeah. hard <laughs> because I usually write it like the right hand would so yeah anyways, a little puzzle for you there to figure out that is <laughs> so cool I have never seen anyone done that and I've personally broken one of my hands before and it was really hard for me to use the other one let's be honest here so uh, it's, that's yeah. a great party trick yeah I, I know <laughs> there's a lot of friends in the chat let us know what your party design trick is let us know your design mm -hmm. party tricks I want to know your design party tricks let us know Chad what's up um, but yeah, I'm going to let you continue. This is really exciting. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on a roll. <laughs> um, so the project, um, again, we've been talking about immersive. We're talking about museums. So today we will be building an immersive museum brand. So yeah. uh, some people don't know this about me, but I actually have a BFA. So bringing art and conceptual thinking into my designs or even like business concept is really, really big. So that's why today I feel like I'm designing the brand of my dreams. <laughs> I love that. Everyone in chat. I had never said hi to chat. We should say hi to chat. By the hi way. to the chat. Hey chat, what's up? We have so many friends in the chat. We have Penny, Steve, Viola, RB, Cody Bear. Thank you for modding for us today. We have Paco in the chat, Fatima. Hey, welcome everyone. And everyone's mind is blown. Everyone is loving your tricks and <laughs> all of the work that we have, the zine, all of it. Everyone's really excited to see it. So I can't wait to dive in and learn everything about the thank museum you, thank and the you. concept. Yeah, let's I'm do also it. seeing a few friends here. Hi, mm -hmm. Shiva. I said I was going to say hi to the people I recognize. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So the concept of today's project is an idiom museum. So I'll just read it because it's a little complicated. <laughs> uh, so the museum will consist of experimental immersive rooms. So immersive meaning you're fully like in the experience. Um, a big concept that is very popular right now is like the Van Gogh projection 360 um, mm -hmm. exhibits or the same, I think it was Monet as well. There's Frida Kahlo. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a few happening. So that's an immersive experience. Yeah. Uh, so rooms that examine the literal meaning of specific idioms. The exhibit goals is to showcase how poetic idioms are while offering an artistic interpretation. Each room will render a different experience. So potential location, New York City, Los Angeles, and Vancouver. Wow. No Toronto. I'm sad about that. I mean, Toronto <laughs> gets everything. <laughs> <laughs> Have to leave some for the rest of, yeah. you know, Canada. Wait. Okay. Yes. I agree. <laughs> All right. So, so how did you come up with the idea of like having idioms with the museum? How did you come up with that? Uh, just my crazy brain, I guess. Like... <laughs> I'm like the kind of person that like likes to merge concepts together and see mm -hmm. if it's if it's if it makes sense and then finding connections and uh, meaning into it. Um, I love to do that with my clients. Uh, yeah, it's just and I guess it's it's a very artistic way of thinking in a sense. Yeah. Very cool. um, so some of you may be wondering what are idioms uh, to begin with? Um, yeah. I, 
like I won't lie, I actually learned what they were a few years ago. <laughs> um, probably because I'm French. Uh, <laughs> so an idiom is a widely used saying or expression that contains a figurative meaning that is different from the liter like the, the phrase literal meaning. So we will say sometimes under the weather, which means you're feeling sick or the ball is in your court, meaning I'm waiting on you to take action and so on, right? Break a leg. Uh, I got break a leg a lot today before this live and I was like, yay, idiom. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was it was cool. So are uh, these, have you already decided the idioms uh, that we have or are we going to ask Jack for some? Uh, I have a few concepts to show you, but mm -hmm. we will ask the audience on their favorite, maybe on how we will bring that together on like the design aspect of things. So get your idioms ready at uh, chat. Yeah, let's do it, chat. Pressure's on. Yeah. Pressure's okay. on. Go back. So go here back. are Sorry. my, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It, it's a, it's yep. a kind of a big intro. I really want to set the tone on like understanding mm -hmm. the concept. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so these are my two favorite idioms, I guess, um, as a creative would <laughs> uh, color mm -hmm. outside the lines and think outside the box. So the name of the business or the museum today will be museum, <laughs> which is a cool concept that we bring both the word museum and idiom together. Mm -hmm. And it's fun because phonetically it sounds the same. I love that. Well, yeah, yeah, there's a pun right there. I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's actually a concept for that. Um, there is, I have a book here. It's not that book, but it's a really good book. It's called uh, Pop or Tang Fu by Sam Horn. And mm -hmm. it's all about like creating fun copy like that. So a Tang Fu would be when you take two words again, like two concepts and then bring it together. Oh, interesting. I didn't know it, that. It's really cool. And then you can create your own words. Like uh, the best example is like go play, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Gogurt, sorry, Gogurt. So yogurt and go for people that eat yogurt on the go. So Gogurt. Oh, I've been doing that for a while. I never knew what it was. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. There you go. So the mission of the museum would be Turning idioms into immersive experiences, visitors are invited to witness the literal meaning. This is really important. We're not going with what it means, we're going with mm -hmm. what it says. Um, of those expressions via interactive installation and cu yeah. carefully curated moments. I love using the word curated so much. <laughs> so here is an example of a room that we could have in the museum mm -hmm. so see through rose colored glasses so <laughs> we could have a pink room with tinted uh, glass that's overlooking the skyline this is new york behind you and maybe the ceiling is also made out of glass so the clouds turn pink and it's like a full pink experience also uh, for to design this, I use like the vanishing point. I went back into like my high school <laughs> yeah. dates, like yeah. of drawing. It was super fun. Uh, blessing in disguise. So this room would be a golden tint, and you are the blessing, and then you can dress up because you're in disguise, and then mm -hmm. to do have a photo shoot, and you can either leave with a film strip or put your picture on the gallery at the back here oh, and that. my favorite like i i truly wish somebody like would do this <laughs> going back to the drawing board the room could be all white like as if it was a white uh white board and then the be creative would be chalk paint that you can write on and mm -hmm. this wall you can see on the left would would have hanging sketchbooks so you can take a sketchbook sketch something put it back and again fully immersive room and experience. i love that so in this case the room is your canvas I love exactly it. <laughs> oh that's actually another idiom right there exactly yeah also before we move on ryan in the chat wants to know what typeface you're using for the slides right before your presentations are the one that have the idioms what is that typeface the chat it's is really called, loving it <laughs> it's called babe sen 
Oh, interesting. Babe. Is it yeah. is it in Novi font? It's I I got it on Creative Market, but found it on Behance. Oh, interesting. Okay, nice. Yeah, there you go. Let's so, see. whenever we are creating like a full concept, whether it's the design, the visual identity, we always need to be mindful of who is the audience, who are we designing for, and mm -hmm. how can we attract them right with the designs. So here I have created some customer profiles and Annika, I want you to to pick one and then we can go over it because going with all three will be a little long. Oh, interesting. Hold on. I was looking for the font. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I think I want to look at Andres just because, um, yeah, there's the same age group as I am. So I want to know what there kind of what kind of user personas. Um, yeah. Let's so Andres is born in Spain. He is mm -hmm. a nomad, if you want. He mm -hmm. is currently residing in Vancouver. He is a freelance UX designer, and he loves the freedom of being a freelancer. Uh, being a UX designer, language and understanding how everything works is very, very important to him. And he's always looking to have an experience. <laughs> so... Andres would be the type of visitors that we want to attract to the museum. So there you go. Nice. Yeah, that is very interesting. Let's let's go back to the Can oh. we can we see the other ones as well? Yeah, for sure. Quickly, Anna mm -hmm. is a mother. She is an editor in chief for mm -hmm. a big uh, publishing company in New York and uh, literature obviously is her main passion and she is looking for ways to stay creative and get like her like, find some new ideas to bring back to work yeah. it's a little bit the same with shari here she is a marketing consultant and she's she wants that big promotion and again like she's looking for inspiration everywhere that she she goes to impress her superiors Oh, there is such a contrast between the two users that you just showed us. I love that. Yeah. But they all have something in common. They all want to mm -hmm. be inspired. They want to feel inspired. Mm -hmm. They want to live an experience. Yeah. And they are like very curious and, and like they they're seeking for something like that. They are like excited about that type of stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is a purely fictional project i wish it existed for real so just in case there's maybe investors or museum <laughs> people in the room here's my email yep. <laughs> feel free to slide into my dms i'm down <laughs> let's work on this for real <laughs> let's do it yeah so are we ready to start the design process we are yeah i'm really Amazing. excited to see it are we going to design the logo first Yes. So this is the mood board I put together. Again, having in mind Shari, Anna, and Andres. Um, mm -hmm. When we look at this, I tried to find even some images of rooms that existed, like interactive room. This I really like this here uh, with the pink tinted glass. Yeah. And um, yeah, like overall, like the design, very clean, bold fonts, uh, cutouts. Um, posters or this is an art magazine I guess cool mm -hmm. merch which is all going to be like tied together um, with the immersive experience so that those would be touch points like after right like the like the exhibit uh, catalog after that you can still remember your experience um, and I really like this here uh, the happiness museum mm -hmm. uh, logo because it is like a smile. very very simple but it says so much yep so like, i so love that as well it's it's so great uh mm -hmm. sometimes don't have to overthink it and um i'm gonna walk you through the process because <laughs> i've been sketching for a very long time for this but i also want to invite you to uh behance where i found a lot of inspiration this is a mood board that i created on my profile so feel free to go there to understand how my brain works if you want oh sweet yeah 
I actually recognize some of those uh, images from Behance. I also created a fictional museum brand and I also oh, did some of those. Yeah. So really fun how you can find inspiration on Behance like that. I love it. It's amazing. And the mood board feature is great. You yeah. can also follow someone else's mood board so you can see how they think and how they grow their creative practice, which is amazing. Loving yeah. Behance for that. You so can also much. collaborate with mood boards now. You can invite people to oh. add stuff to your same mood board. Um, this has been fairly new, I would say a few months, but it's still new enough that not everyone knows about it. So yeah, I love to share that. <laughs> there you go. You're like people in the chat now, you know what's up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I love these sketches though. Um, how how, do, oh how did your thought process look like when you were doing these? The thought process was all over the place. Um, <laughs> I, I guess not having a real client messed mm -hmm. me up for a little bit. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. um so it got messy i did yeah. everything um like I, I wanted to have a face because i'm like oh it's the anti-figurative but then i'm like oh, it looks like phantom of the opera i don't like that then i'm like oh maybe in the eye because we're seeing something that mm -hmm. we're speaking and then i'm like oh maybe adding lips and then eye and inside i'm like okay i, I like that concept and then i tried it like vector yeah. and i'm like no that doesn't that doesn't work I was a little discouraged. Um, again, that's normal part of the process. Sometimes it's you don't always have it just like that. Um, let us know in the chat if that happens to you as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then I remembered, and I'm going to go back to this yep. and how simple that was. And I even wrote down I have a re really bad handwriting. <laughs> Even wrote down the words um, that I was trying to convey within this full brand, which yeah. you can see here. And I'm like, I'm overthinking this. Uh, it should be really, really simple. And then I mm -hmm. just, <clears throat> it's not like the best, I know, <laughs> um, the best sketch, but I'm like, this, this could work. It's just a typeface and then adding some meaning into the letters and how it's going to be displayed yeah so i was after that like looking for a expanded font so we have a few that we can work with here um mm. like i wanted to have like a thickness something you could see from afar specifically yeah. if there's like big posters for that like at museum um experience <laughs> mm. um so that's that's where like my research led me so far and now i'm ready to dive into making that logo let's do it are we using adobe illustrator we are using adobe illustrator i already have my fonts here mm -hmm. and i guess i could explain to you the concept of of this uh, if I go back. So... Yeah, can we zoom in on the sketches um, over here? I want to see the bad handwriting. I want to see every detail. <laughs> oh, interesting. So you have... like... Yeah, so I love to see that because I want to see what was going on in your brain while you were sketching it and you were thinking about the concepts while you were creating it. So is it really enough to showcase what the brand values and ethics are? Does this really speak to the audience and will my audience really know what the logo speaks for like what in the long term yeah so i love that's to it. see yeah that's it and as i was like writing down the words yeah i said hmm like there's some letters that are being repeated here like the m and the i and then mm -hmm. as you recall like we are bring bridging two words together yeah. so sh is it just as easy as having those two words and like having full colored letters for mm -hmm. the start of museum and then idiom, which is technically doesn't exist in real life, just yeah. have the outline and we need to figure it out. We need to fill in the gaps. And oh. then I'm like, okay, this is getting interesting here. We have that something. Is, that is beautiful. Um, but that said, I want to welcome all our new viewers. Thank you so much for watching both on YouTube and Behance. We have Isabel here um, explaining the concept for her fictional brand today. So if you have any questions for Izzy, make sure to put them in the chat so I can relay them to her. 
and ask all the fun stuff and give us your favorite design party trick. We have that question going on. But yeah, go ahead. I just want to do that because I see there's a lot of new friends joining us in chat. James, Firdos, um, Caroline, Claudio. Hi, hi. Welcome on in everyone. Oh, wow. I'm recognizing a lot of people here. So hi, Firdos. <laughs> hi, Caroline. Uh, it's so, so good to, to oh, see I you all here. Those are my totally friends. said their names <laughs> wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sure it's okay. Um, yeah, so let's dive into this. Oh, I also want to mention the dot here because I really wanted to have this added element and it mm -hmm. started like, should I have like uh, like this dot over the eye? And I'm like, ah, that's overdone. And then I even thought like, should it be an eye? Mm, yeah. Again, overdone, not sure. But then I'm like, a dot at the end could be interesting because technically idioms are sentences. So having that dot could become also like a playful element that then we add into like the the full identity of it. So it. anyways, we we went very long on the concept, but this is what happens in Izzy world. There's a lot of <laughs> unicorns in here. <laughs> um, but let's dive into making the design with Illustrator. Love it. So yeah, I love to see it. Everyone in chat is really loving it. Um, Cassandra says, you rock easy. Oh, and, Cassandra. Um, Cassandra mm -hmm. is my birthday twin. And do you want to know a fun fact with Cassandra? Um, we have the same birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Cassandra is the founder of Montreal Design Club. Oh, so that is so interesting. That is so yeah. interesting. <laughs> so hi, Cassandra. Thank you so much for yeah. coming today. Welcome All right. Here. Do we have a font that we like better that we want to try? Um, this um, this concept with I don't know I think a sans serif would work really well like you had in your sketch I think that would work really well in like an uppercase why don't we start with that let's do it like this one mm -hmm. maybe something like that what do you think I'm I'm going with the flow <laughs> I also like the all uppercase too. Um, mm -hmm. I think it, it, specifically for museum brands, like from the research and even going back to that mood board on Behance, um, it, the the logos were very, very simple. Yeah. Um, they were, it's just the name. And then it was mostly like what was added to it and I think having a very subtle logo works well to really emphasize like the exhibitions after it's not taking away take it the exhibition like the star is not the logo it's what's happening mm. I love to hear about your thought process this way yeah it's really interesting to see how other designers work and like what goes on in their brain when they're designing something like this so Do you will be think... oh sorry yeah, I was just saying, do you think your thought process has evolved as you've worked with real world clients or do you think like fictional projects really help or is that how you got started in design? Um, I know you have a BFA, but I'm really curious how you started um, your design practice. Tell us more about that. Uh, so I, <laughs> it was like a journey of everything <laughs> mm -hmm. to get me to design. Um, yeah. I, after I graduated from my BFA, I try to have a job in just a creative um, job and I couldn't. <laughs> it took me three years to actually find a job within like my my field and mm. I felt pretty uh, devastated uh, about it. Um, but I kept my head up. I, I went to take night classes for web design and then that's how I got into design and just started hustling offered my services as a freelancer so I guess I became an entrepreneur really like young <laughs> by accident um, okay. and I would go to what I knew best right like uh, I, I knew artists because that's what like I I, I graduated artists um, and that's the world that I knew so I I was like, hey, do you want a portfolio? And then that's how I got immersed into design and started to to 
love love it. And then just got into branding, got a job in an agency. And then I'm like, ah, I'm not made for the, the agency life and decided to work for myself. And it's been two years and a half now that I'm working for myself. So that is amazing to know that you even founded like Ottawa Design Club and are practicing on your own and designing for us. That is inspiring to me. That is so cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I can't yeah, take all the we... credit for the club though, because Montreal started with the club. I called oh, them Cassand- and asked. Cassandra. Cassandra. Yes. If I'm saying that right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So what are we doing now with the design? So I just want to like align everything. Mm-hmm. Um, again, sometimes like I do this, then I, I take it back. I'm not sure. Um, I just want to make sure like everything is nice. Sometimes there is that optical illusion happening. Like it, it was the O was overflowing a little bit, like with the my my ruler guides. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I take a step back here, the O looks a little too small. So I'll go ahead and fix that after that. That's normal that you need to adjust it a little bit. Yeah. Um, after but again like this is a very very simple concept um so we won't necessarily be spending a lot of time on it but i want to build derivatives from it um and that's where we can get a little creative love that yeah um we had input from the chat Ariane and firdaus said they like the fourth and the third one um for the fonts we had the fourth and the third one hold on let's go fourth set third and fourth set basically so the one that we chose already which These is the fourth two. one oh yeah and there the you go and that. this one oh the one above that so this one mm-hmm. yeah that's the 